M0FXB new firmware version 1.07 is available for your D16A. Big thanks to Bridgecom, they have a link just here where you can download the 1.07. I'll put the link in the description. So just click here where it says 107 and it will download up to your download section here. I'm running Chrome at the moment. Now, I really like the D168. It's good value. You can buy the Anytone model. You can buy the Air of Tone model. It's identical and they're only about £80 if you, if you get that one. And it actually comes with two batteries. I'll put a link in the description so now if we go to the downloads here and open up the file just to take a look move that over here we've got the radio connected via usb-c you can see the green cable just there it's not a special cable but it is a data cable it's not one of those really cheap ones that just charge it allows data to carry through as well mine's got version 1.06 on there at the moment they're quite a long list of files here um, but if we look, one of them says firmware, so we're just going to double click that. But the CPS is there as well, further down, uh, which I have downloaded. I'll just sh show you just, there's CPS. When you double click and run that, it looks like this. And I was able to, to read it and save a file, because at the end of this, you have to factory reset. So you just set your COM. So set COM here. And you get your number of your com just by right clicking on windows squares at the bottom so hit device manager and you'll go to ports and it's com it's quite a high number on mine 49 um so then you select 49 just here click ok and then it's gonna read and write from the radio go program read and then once you've read go file save okay and so at least you've got everything saved and it's it's saved it there okay so just uh minimize that for the minute just gonna extract the firmware see the firmware there i'm gonna extract it to a folder so what i do is i just move everything over just like so and there's loads on my desktop there and i create a new folder just here by going right click just make sure you can see this a minute. There you go. It's better. So I create a new folder. Right click in a space. New folder. And I just call it, um, I call it 168 uh, firmware. Uh, 107, isn't it? Then I go back to that that group of files and just click, go to the firmware and then extract. Make sure you highlight it, extract. And then I just go to that file, which is called 168. It'll be on my desktop. So click desktop first, then go to one, look for 168, which we're looking for. Just there and click OK. And then that's the one we need. So double click it and make sure it's in there. All right, it's all a bit laggy. Um, there you are, firmware. And you've got the CDD, the CDI, and the SPI. So, yeah, no change log shown there at all. Let me look back at the main file. Yeah, interesting. I can't see a change log and I've looked around. But anyway, let's just dive in and do the firmware we need to get the radio back into firmware mode so turn the radio off like so and then you're going to be pressing the the there's two side buttons under the ptt not the ptt the side and then you're going to turn it on you do need to make sure you do this it puts it into firmware mode and it's made my computer's made a noise a beep and there's a red LED flashing at the top. If you don't get that, then it's not in firmware mode. Right, then at the top here, uh, you'll see that it says tool. So go to tool, then firmware update and icon. See that tool, firmware update. 
Then we're going to just select the file. So you go open file and go. Remember, we put it in our desktop. We created that file called 168. So go desktop and look for the 168. And it's there's the, the group of files. Double click, but you want the one that's the SPI. And that says SPI there. Let's just move that over so you can see it a bit clearer. Okay, so you're selecting the, the file. Double click SPI. The radio screen, as you can see, has gone black. Like so, a double click. It says that the file's successfully gone in just here. Click OK. And then click right. And remember that you we made a backup, so we're not going to lose all our memories. We will once we factory reset, but we've got a backup file. And I've even found uh, the link for database, which is where you can get all your latest contacts, your latest uh, ID so that when you're when it's busy on your on, on DMR you see all the different call signs and locations and um, the other thing is to uh, to make sure you know your brandmeister password because uh, you're going to need to put that into your hotspot if you use a hotspot things like that but anyway that's gone in 1.07 it will say 1.07 even now if you look in the radio but to do this properly you have to factory reset it. So let it come back on. There you are. So at the moment it's working great already. My hotspot's connected, which is just next to it. Just here, DV Mega Hotspot. Very nice. Anyway, let's quickly factory reset. So we'll turn it off. We're gonna press the bot the the PTT and the button underneath. So it's PTT and button underneath. Turn on, keep your fingers on, and then confirm. And it's now going to factory reset. Give it a minute. So we've, turned, we've lost, I'm not going to do the time now, but you can set the time if you want. Just press it and then Obviously, we're now going to get the blank radio as it was when you purchased it. So now we're just going to go program right to radio. And click OK. Uh, I'm going to select digital contacts for now because I know that they're on this co-plug. And oh, that was very quick. So possible, I would say that they're not on the co-plug. Because if they were, they wouldn't have gone in so quick. So what I'll do, I will add my contacts now. Otherwise, we're not going to get all that nice information on the screen when the hotspot's busy. But you can see there, it's all booted up back to normal. We'll go menu. Uh, go to settings. Green button is menu. Device info. Ta-da, 1.07. That's good. Now let's get the contacts in. So go to this link here that I will provide, radio.net, and then go to user CSV. So you have to, I've already done it for you, but it's data dumps, user CSV. Click that and it puts the CSV here, okay? The user CSV. And we're going to import that into our radio. The other thing I would do before you forget is go to options. Even though this radio hasn't got Bluetooth, um, as far as I can see, I'm going to turn it on anyway. GPS, Bluetooth and APRS, just for fun. Now let's do the contact. So now go to the top, Tools, <coughs> Import is the second one down. Then Digital Contacts, and then find that file, Downloads, there it is there. <clears throat> user c8 is what mine's called but anyway, double click and then import and it sort of brings them in this bit doesn't actually take long it's when you send them to the radio that it, it'll take probably 10 minutes because there's uh, i think it's something like two hundred and fifty thousand contacts so give that a sec so it says import complete and then you just go right to radio 
Click OK, but this time click Digital Contacts. And then the first bit is fast, because that's just your, your usual channel memories. And then it takes quite a while for the, you know, for everything else to go in the contacts, basically. If we just quickly look at Brandmeister, this is something you should do. Register for Brandmeister. Um, because you're going to need your Brandmeister password. Now, here's my account. If I go M0FXB self-care and it logs in, you need to get your, let's do that again. Click my device a minute. A couple of things I always do. Uh, if we click the green on the left, that's my hotspot, and put in your favourite ones, like there on 2350, and I've got 91 here, and we'll put 91 again, not sure why that vanished. And then it will keep trying to find them instead of you having to select them all the time. Now, I find that it brings the hotspot to life. Then the other thing is, you'll do that self-care again. Here, your password. So where it says hotspot security, you need to put a password and save it and use that whenever you're programming a hotspot. That's important. Mm. Yeah, that's gone in really fast. Oh no, there's another load. And what you'll find that when it has gone in, if we bring back the radio, that when it's gone in, that when the hotspot, and you know, to me, there's many people out there that have got DMR radios that have not got a hotspot, but I find that to be complete madness to not have a hotspot if you've got a DMR D style fusion radio because I know we've got repeaters and we can we can still use our repeaters but when you've got a hotspot on your table and they don't cost much you know I'll put a link in for one that's only about 60 pounds um but when you're um but I actually like really like the DV mega ones which cost more but they look great yeah by the way that's your sort of flashy one with a nice screen. But, you know, if budgets, if you're being careful with your money, which is good, then uh, just get a normal budget one. It's like having your own repeater in your shack on your table. You choose whether it's doing DMR, D-Star Fusion. You can tell it to do all three, but this radio only receives DMR. Um, and, and then you can choose and move around different talk groups, reflectors, YSF rooms, all that kind of stuff. You choose. That's the key thing. Here. So it massively opens up your digital side of your hobby. So anyone that hasn't got um, a, a hotspot is completely mad. And this myth about real radio, that's completely mad. We're doing digital here. Um, and also, even if you were contacting your repeater, they have got one of those hotspots attached to their repeater, which is connected to the internet on their computer. So it's a myth, um, but 100% get yourself a hotspot. There you go, you can see it's working excellent. It's a great radio. And here's what a budget hotspot costs. They're about 48 pound delivered. There is configuration that you need to learn as well. And I'll show you the Aerotone, which is the identical model to the Anytone. And here it is, I'll put the link in the description. It's the same radio. I mean, I've seen the prices go right down to about £60, so it does vary. But if you want to use your local shop like some of the big sellers in the UK and the USA, they're about £120, and you do get two batteries, and you get their backup as well, so it's up to you. But the links are in the description for everything I've done. Thanks for watching my channel. Catch you on air. Bye for now. Before I forget, someone did ask me about uh, hotspots, uh, how, what my settings are, so I'll quickly show that. Channel 11... And then, so channel 11, hotspot, it's called Hubnet, this one. And there it is there, receive, transmit is, the, is my hotspot frequency, which I'll show you on the hotspot in a sec. Digital, and then down here, color code is one and slot two. So slot it is quite a lot to take in, slot two, color code one. See the way it says Hubnet here, that's called a contact. You have to select here to decide which talk group it's going to connect to. And you actually have to create these contacts. They're basically talk group numbers. So if we go to digital here, just click OK a minute. And look for the word contact. Where is it? Here, look. See, so under digital, it says contact talk groups. Okay. And you have to add them here. So 
we've got 91 there which is one i use a lot and then 23526 um these are and then obviously you can use you could use tgif you can use there's thousands of talk group numbers but you're going to use the ones you like when you select these if you select say for example the type here which is a group call which is nearly all of them so that's going to be your worldwide and your, your chat and all that is a group call but if it's private which is all person to person you select private but most of the time you're selecting groups so if i add one here and put in the number which is the most important most important thing to so just go double click it opens up a, a new window and you give it a name first which is not the important thing so we'll call it chat three this one and the name should be the name that the the talk group people have given it not your not a name you've invented group call and then the dmr id two uh three five three i think that one is and click ok and then uh, i've already done it so let's just we'll have to just change that to four and then we'll call it chat four for now okay good okay. and you've you've added it so now when you go back to the channels which are here and the channel we were just doing if you when you click where your contacts are here i could choose to any of the ones that you've just created and the reason you put the name is because it's easier to find them but you could do the number i suppose give the the name as the number but the most important thing is the number because it's almost like a phone number you've got your dmr number um and then the the talk groups have got their number and it's linking the numbers together that's how dmr works so of course you need to make sure you've got your dmr id inside your radio which is there look digital and uh, master id hmm. i'm going to put that one in there two three four one four three seven but that's not the one i actually normally use um m zero fx people i'm going to put in there just because i can but the radio id is where i tend to put it here radio id m0 fxp and even the call sign isn't important what's important is the dmr number you don't get a dmr number without your call sign when you've created that channel this is the next twist you need to make sure you put that channel you just created into a zone that you where you're going to find it so you've got zones which are groups of channels and i've named one here called hotspots double click and the channel that we just actually we didn't create it we edited was number 11 is there and you can put them in and take them out this long list here is every channel you've ever created on your co-plug so that's why if you if you borrow one from a friend but it's got thousands and thousands of channels it's going to be very daunting so i tend to just add a few add about 20 that i actually use um so and i've created click ok aprs china hotspot jewel hotspot these are things that i use open spot three amazing little hot spot that i've got just here open spot four i think i've got now this little thing here they're brilliant but, but again it's dmr dmr is hard there's no there's no easy with dmr there's really hard and then forget you know completely forget and having to remind yourself and relearn and i'm watching my videos especially on dmr i watch them every day to remind myself how to uh, how to use them okay so um you know thanks for watching i know it's quite a lot to take in uh but there's there is no easy with dmr and you you are gonna have to learn to do it yourself because if someone tries to do it for you they're going to be on your computer for hours and i don't feel that's fair on, on anyone you've got to just learn how to do it you know if you're going to buy a dmr radio you've got to learn how to do it cheers for now bye for now